Hi, Julie. All right. So I figured out the complete solution to our problem. It's wonderful how to create an HTML file that is the standalone 3D object. So what you want to do is you want to go over to Downloads um, at Blender for Web. Blender for Web. All right. And uh, when you get to that page, blenderforweb.com, you're going to go to Downloads and skip all that and go to the Blender add-on. Select that. Don't select anything here. You can actually just download the product. Save the file. All right, and you're all set with that. Then you go into your Blender, okay? Um, let me just delete that out. Go to your Blender, go to File, User Preferences. And then, no matter what's selected here, click on Add-ons, and then Install Add-on from File. Find the location that you downloaded your file. It's a zip file. Don't open the zip file. Just leave it as it is. Um, it uses the zip file. Select it and click Install Add-on from File. After you've done that, you'll see it there. It will be unchecked. Go ahead and check it. After it shows a checkbox in the box, also select User, Save User Settings. Uh, that will make it so you don't always have to check that box. Definitely click that. Then close the window and you're all set. So now what this is, is you have an add-on in here that will let you export the 3D object as an HTML file. And that HTML file will be standalone. It doesn't require any plugins or additional assistance on the end of somebody else. All of its ability is already built into the uh, standard HTML programming and should be available universally on every single browser. So let me show you an example now of how it works and what you have to do in order to make it look proper. There's very little work that needs to go into it at this point, so you're going to be very happy and delighted as I am. You go to File, Import, and I'm, I exported it as a DAE file in Agisoft, and what that allowed was for the texturing and all the mapping to be completely proper. It has to be a DAE file in Second Life, and because that worked for me perfectly, I decided to import that same file this way and it was successful. So these are the DAE files for some of my projects. Large 2 is the one that I actually use to make my large angel. So I'm going to import that one. It's a collada file. A DAE file is a collada file. Um, as you can see, we're going to want to get it over here because this is going to be the center point of where that HTML file loads up. If we were to be rotating around, this thing would be swinging all over the screen. So you can right click it and move it and then right click to keep it in that position. Um, you can move it around. Using this rotate um, can be a, uh, a bit helpful. This way now I rotated it a little bit more to the angle that I want. All right, you get the idea. And I'm uh, just gonna get it a little bit more in the center and bring it down. And uh, yeah, that's totally good. All right, so we have it in the center. The only other thing we need to do with it is work on these textures. Now, all these options up here are for different components. Uh, this here is where we're gonna wanna go. And as you can see, we have our different textures here. Normally, you would see only one texture on here. But with Second Life, we're limited to a texture map that's no bigger than 1,024 pixels, which is basically like standard high definition. And stretching that around uh, doesn't give you the same fidelity as using multiple textures, which each texture, this one's broken up into eight, it means there's eight sections to this angel, and each of those sections has a texture that's 1024. So it's basically like an 8K texture by splitting it up that way. And it's also a bit easier for rendering programs too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just change the shading on these textures, all right? So select the first one, and down here, this option here under shading, you're gonna wanna select shapeless. And as you notice that, it's no longer going to be paying attention to shading information. You do want it at full bright for what we're going to use. So go down and do that for each one of these textures. And that is the only thing that you'll need to do to tweak this before rendering out as an HTML file. And as you will soon see, we are almost done. Done. All right, go to File. And now Export. And as you'll see, we have two more options down here. We have Blend for Web. And we have um, another blend for web, and this one is for HTML. Um, you also have an option over here, blend for web, and I think that changes our mode and gives us other options. Very cool. I'll have to explore that. 
All right, blend for web HTML. Select what you want your HTML file to be called. Um, I'm going to do Julie example two because I had done one for you before. Um, shade on my desktop. Yep, and save. Okay, so it's done. Go to my desktop, and uh, this is the one I had made here, and here's the one I just made. Julie example two. Just double click it. It loads up like this already. It has certain tools and stuff in here as well, which is really wonderful. Um, and you can completely do what you need to do with it. You can zoom in, you can rotate around. It's nice and fluid. I like it a lot. Um, this should work on anybody's browser. And if the webmaster for our client wants to have this in a window, and have other information here uh, on their website, then perhaps we could scale down the object in the center so that it works better for them. But those are things and details that we would discuss with clients after showing them the, the render and how their products would uh, benefit them for marketing. Um, I tried this on my touchscreen tablet um, computer, the big one, the 27 inch, and it was absolutely delightful to play with with my fingers and everything. So, um, so there it is, an HTML file. What I'm gonna do now, is um, I'm going to send you this file here, this this uh, DAE file. You can do the same exact things that I did. Go to Blender for Web, download that plugin, um, check mark it, save your settings, and then import this DAE file. Go over to where the textures are for the shading, uh, make them all shadeless, and then export it out as an HTML file. Double click it, and uh, whatever your default browser is will open up this file, and it should have all of these same settings, and it should be exactly as you see here. Um, I'm absolutely delighted with it though. I mean, it's fluid, it's gorgeous, and as you can see here, it's stored locally in the HTML file, which is on my computer. So I'm not uh, reliant on it loading across the internet from someone else's server, which means it's going to be slower, and two, less secure, three, um, of course, if it goes down, it's not available for the client, in, so now it would be. So there you go, hon. I will talk to you soon. Enjoy.